This video will cover the steps needed to set up Ocarina of Time VR yourself using my setup guide. Step 1 is to download Kaze's first person OOT VR mod. So go to his YouTube video, go down to his description, and download the file. I recommend making a new folder for all your OOT VR stuff. Step 2. Download this hex editor, HXD. I figured it was easier this way instead of just making a brand new mod. Download your language, set it up, install it wherever you want. Next up, you will drag the ISO into HXD. And it may look a little overwhelming, but just go over here under the decoded text and type PZLE just like that, and then save. And that's all you gotta do. Step three, download Dolphin VR. Get the latest version. To mega download, make sure your antivirus allows you to download it. And once it's finished, go ahead and run it. Install it wherever you'd like. If you install in the default file location like I did there for demonstration purposes, you will need to run Dolphin as admin whenever you make settings changes. Step four, configure your ISO directory. So go ahead and run Dolphin VR. Remember to run Dolphin as administrator if you save Dolphin in your program files. If you don't do this, you will not be able to save the configuration files that are needed for step seven. If it worked, OT VR will appear here in the games list. Steps five, six, and seven, you can find the respective files in a zip format found in my Discord under the My OOT Documents channel. And thank you, by the way, to everyone who's done this. This is very nice. And once all of them have been downloaded, go ahead and open them. Step five will contain an image of the dolphin settings. Now go through and check or uncheck or change any of the settings that I have to match those of yours. If I don't show one of the tabs, that means the default options are fine. Step six will apply a configuration file. Go ahead and extract this to any folder. And this file can be opened with any old standard text editor. You will copy and paste the text in this notepad document and override any text that may currently be present in the configuration for this specific game and to reach that configuration, you will right click the game in the game list, go to properties, go to AR codes, come down to edit config, at which point you will control A, control V, and then save to overwrite the existing configuration file. Step seven, please note that there's another file called pzle01.ini. This is a different one than the one in step six. Do the same procedure for all three of these. Go to AR codes and you will click show defaults. This will load up three individual text files, each with a different name. And these are the three text files that will correlate with the three text files that I provide in step seven. Again, you can open each of these files with a text editor, specifically notepad is easiest. And again, you will control A, control C, exit out, go into the respective file, control A, control V, control S, and it'll save. Repeat that for each of the three files. Now, when you close out of this and reload the AR code tabs under the properties for that game, it will now be updated with the AR code that I've provided. Go ahead and click all of them, except for the last one, unless you wanna do testing or just for fun, be able to levitate by pressing D-pad left. Next, download the modified ultra high def texture pack originally created by Admintis and I've modified in order to make it compatible with this older Dolphin VR emulator. Once you've downloaded it, go ahead and open it up and you will extract this to Dolphin's custom texture location, which you can find under your documents, Dolphin emulator, load, textures, and say okay. It will take a few minutes. When it's finished, you'll have one folder in your textures folder 
and it will contain the game ID PZLE01, and you're done. Now that Dolphin VR is completely set up, OT VR will start shortly after. Now from here, you'll need to configure a controller that you want to use for Dolphin. To do that, you will go to Controllers, Configure, and the Dolphin VR emulator has some preset options here. For example, if I was playing with the keyboard and mouse, you can assign buttons by clicking on the button modifier and then clicking any key on your keyboard, and then it'll modify it. And then as you press down the key, down here it will show which button is currently being activated. This is useful to see if your controller is currently accepting an input. Keep in mind this version of Ocarina of Time is using the GameCube Ocarina of Time button mapping, so the X button will be C right, Y button is C left, and Z will be C down. The L button will be your Z targeting button. Threshold will indicate how hard you have to press the button down in order for the button to be activated. Finally, when you're happy with all the settings, I recommend having background input on, and then you can type in a name for your profile, like such, and then click save. And now whenever you want, you can load up that profile. Play around with your controller settings to see which one works best for you. If you want to use Valve Index controllers, that's also something that is possible to do despite the fact this Dolphin VR emulator does not have Valve Index controllers set up by default. In order to do that, you'll have to install this DLL file. All you have to do is click this executable file to download it, and then run it when it's downloaded. Follow the setup wizard, just click finish when it's done. Next, you'll need to install Index 3.6. Extract the folder to your OOT VR folder. Now before you run it, make sure Steam VR is currently loaded. Once you're in Steam VR, I recommend disabling Steam VR Home. To do that, go to your settings, go down here to advanced settings, click show, go to general, go down here, Steam VR Home. You can now launch XJoy, and if everything worked, it will say created a report and rumble received. From here, you can go to Dolphin and configure your controllers. You may need to restart Dolphin or even your computer. Once you've done that, you can then go and choose X input, and now you should be able to press buttons on your Valve Index controller, and they will register as button presses in Dolphin, just like that. So here you can see the Valve Index controller on the left. Starting with the left hand, I choose the Valve Index A button to be the GameCube B button. The reason for this is Link is left-handed, so as you swing your sword, you can press the Valve Index left hand A button, and I'll press the B button to swing Link's sword in the game. You can see it's working, how the B button lights up down here under the controller buttons. You can download my Valve Index controller settings from here, and you can place this file in the Dolphin controller configuration preset folder, which you can find here. Now you can load that profile in Dolphin, and all the buttons will line up and correlate with the controller configuration I've provided. We'll go over all the buttons now because they can be a little confusing. Key note here for the controller settings, which could apply for everyone as well, is you can see that a lot of these different buttons have conditional statements. You can right click a button in order to get more options and you can make an and or or. So like you can press either the button A or thumb R in order to activate one of the buttons. The benefit of that is that you can hold down button combinations to press one button on the GameCube. And that's useful because the Valve Index controllers have less buttons than the GameCube controller. So for example, the start button, if you hold down the grip, just even lightly holding it, and you press the B button on the right hand, what this is gonna do is press the X button, which is C right on the GameCube controller. But if you let go of all the grips and press the B button, this will now instead press the start button. This also relates to the D-pad buttons. For example, when I'm not holding the grips down and I press down on the trackpad, this will press D-pad left. But when I am holding the grips down, it'll press D-pad right. There's an issue that sometimes comes up with the Valve Index controllers. That is constant rumbling when you're playing Dolphin. In order to fix this, you have to disable the haptics on your controllers in Steam VR itself. 
So in order to fix that, you'll have to disable the haptics in your controllers under the Steam VR settings. If you manage controller bindings, edit the bindings, and scroll down to the grip. If there are haptics here, press the delete button. And then same thing for the haptics here under edit haptics. Click unused. Do the same thing for the right hand and then click save personal binding. A lot of people have been asking me how do I play this on the Oculus. To be honest, I have no idea. I don't own one. But from what I've heard and read, you can try getting it to work on the Oculus Quest using a virtual desktop and Oculus Link. And if you don't have those, then there's also something called an ALVR virtual desktop. You could try setting it up through that. As long as you can load Dolphin VR in some way, then you'll be able to configure the controllers that you want to use. And that should cover the controller settings. Again, you'll have to configure your own controller if I don't provide a settings file. Hopefully in the future, some people can provide their various controller configurations that may be useful to you. I'm now going to briefly cover some important notes. For the ultra high def texture pack, if Dolphin will not load at all when you click play for OOT VR, it's most likely caused by the custom textures. In this case, you will have to disable custom textures either by skipping step 9 or going over here, going to the advanced tab and unclicking load custom textures. Even if Dolphin does load for you, it's possible the custom textures will cause a little bit of lag. Let's cover a big point that you will likely encounter, and that is audio video stuttering. This is caused by Dolphin VR not running the game at 100 FPS. If your CPU isn't literally top of the line, you're probably going to encounter this. And you can blame the outdated Dolphin VR emulator. It is what it is. I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the best configuration settings are for Dolphin in order to make the game as immersive in VR as possible, but also be playable. Here are the six things that I discovered that work best to reduce video and audio stuttering. First one is you'll go to Config, Advance, Uncheck. Basically this will just disable overclocking for Dolphin. This can cause some other issues, specifically with the custom textures which you may need to disable. First four, five, and six, keep lowering the values one at a time. I recommend starting with the internal resolution. Lower this as much as you can to the point where it won't lag very much, but you don't want it to be too low, otherwise it's gonna be low resolution and painful to play. I'm gonna talk about the AR codes that I've implemented, a few of them that are important to know when you're playing Ocarina of Time. There's a few situations in the game where you're gonna manually have to revert back to 20 FPS. To do this, you can press D-pad down to go back to 20 FPS, and then D-pad up to go back to 30 FPS. One situation in particular you're going to note is if you're trying to talk to a business scrub, you absolutely cannot talk to them in 30 FPS. The three silver rupees into fire trial, collect three of the silver rupees, and do not lift the golden gauntlet stone. Now Kaze's mod activates some built-in OOT anti-piracy features. One of those is the tower collapse bars do not get risen when Zelda uses her magic to try to rise the bars during the tower collapse sequence. I made a code that so you can just simply walk through the bars just like Zelda does when the time comes. I adapted and improved a code to equip boots with the D-pad buttons. D-pad up will equip Kokir boots, D-pad left iron boots, D-pad right hover boots. You have to have the boots in your inventory for it to work and you can only do this if you're an adult since Child Link can only wear Kokiri boots. Now for the EFB copies right here, this will fix the glitchy pause screen. However, it only works while after you've loaded up Dolphin, you click disable and then undisable so it goes back to texture for EFB copies and then and only then will the pause screen be fixed for the rest of that play session. I recommend going to the Dolphin emulator folder in your documents and just reviewing this just to see where everything is saved. If you want to figure out where your memory card is, it's under GC, uh, USA and then card A. And that should sum it up. If I forgot anything or you have any other further questions, feel free to ask in the YouTube comments or on my Discord, which you can find in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Enjoy Ocarina of Time VR and good luck.